Man, this guy be smooth. I wish I had moves like him. Oh dear. Rip, take the stealth boy. What's in this terminal? Nice. Absolutely nothing. What a waste of time. Uh, is the guy floating? No, he's just lying down this time. No longer a floating one. Imagine that. What if ghouls were able to fly? And they were just called floating ones. Alright. Story time. Simon here. By that logic, zombies would be able to fly. And I actually don't think that I'd be able to deal with that. This is a downgrade. They're flying with wings or with levitation? And how fast? Uh, I'd say as fast as they could run in this levitation. So they just fly at things. Like ghosts. I'd hate that. Instead of like uh, groaning, they scream. How about that? Just add that to the mix. Or we could just say that they have leathery wings and then call them Night Gaunts. There's a little nod to a uh, good old HP uh, Lovecraft. Uh, wait for him to get in range. But yeah, KJT, what would you do if ghouls were able to do what we were talking about earlier? I mean, they're ghouls, not zombies, right? Yeah. Like a radio people have gone feral? Yeah. Well, if the nudes, uh, the world's all nuked and irradiated, they just kind of die. Yeah. Like they won't become immune to irradiation, uh, to radiation. Uh, let's assume that it follows all the same rules as the, uh, Fallout ghouls. Like they're immune to irradiation, it could even make them stronger. But for some reason, they're able to uh, float. Uh, I mean, if more radiation means their brains become decayed, they'd reach brain dead in the time it takes to approach you. But yeah, they could feel pain, but they're just basically uh, ghouls that could fly at you really fast and scream instead of uh, moan. How about that? Well, if you shoot them, they're going to get hurt quite a bit and uh, be less interested in attacking you. What well, if they have like no uh, no sense of self-preservation? Like the ferals in Fallout. So they don't care if they're gonna die, they're just attacking to eat. I'm surprised that one didn't get up to attack me. Well, I, they can't charge it. I charge you like regular ghouls do because they collide and fall to the ground and probably break some bones. What if they're really adept at flying? Like, uh, they fly around like birds. Uh, so either there, there are few enough to handle, or there's uh, so many that they interfere with each other and just become easy to handle. Yeah. But how about this? What if only a headshot would take them out? And they're flying very fast. I uh, don't care how adept they are, uh, at the size that they are, they need like a 5 meter, uh, meter part to fly in a group. Yeah. Look, it's the Brotherhood. Better not be taking my experience. Or is that a gunner? No, it's a Brotherhood. Alright. Oh, well, they can't infect you, so they probably have, a. Uh, don't have any teeth anymore. Yeah. But what if how they fight is they pick you up and drop you? Uh, so they'd be like masses of weak flesh pounding into you? Yeah. Look at that. It's just a death claw. Come on. There we go. Ah, uh, nice. We got some backup. I don't like the Brotherhood, but they're helping me. Alright. 
Ah, oh, nice. Uh, now... Got him. Ow. Oh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Come on. Can I do it? No, I can't. Story time Simon here. What weapons do you have? Uh, you have a... Oh, you have a 5mm pistol, there you go. Yeah, it's way more kick than it probably should have. And a shotgun. That's what you got. You got a shotgun and a 5mm pistol. Uh, and let's say you have 50 rounds for the pistol and 10 rounds left for the shotgun because you've already ran into some ghouls. Yep, a 5mm pistol and a shotgun. Let's start a shotgun. A uh, double barrel. There you go. Any kind of double barrel. Just so long as it's not like a semi-automatic. Or pump. Uh, fuck, I'm abandoning the double barrel because the recoil and noise would be, uh, would make you scream when you shoot it. Alright. Alright, so you got a pistol. Now what are you gonna do? Find a sword, probably. Alright. So you uh, walk into a neckbeard's house and find a uh, old sword, an old crusty sword. Lots of kendo practice, so uh, lots of fencing. Ah, uh, lots of fencing practice. All right. I so see you don't care what kind of sword. So yeah, it's a a, a neckbeard's katana. There you go. It's a little sticky, but you don't care. Now you're gonna apply maintenance. <laughs> it's next less crusty and rusty. All right. So now you just have a neckbeard's katana. Uh, it's got anime girls on the handle. Uh, you're gonna try to uh, strengthen it by hating the metal. Because those things are all for show. Alright. I. Uh, how much do you know about, like, I. Uh, blacksmithing? Well, if real life was Fallout, I'd well, have two stars in the perk, maybe? Alright. So you're able to clean it off. And uh, you start fire hardening it. I did not want to drink that. I. Uh, and. I uh, won't be dueling anyone with it, so the katana is ideal, actually. Nice brutal dim chopping monster. Yeah. Alright, so you're faced with like 12 flying ghouls, which are coordinating their attacks, so they sweep in one at a time. You have enough stamina for it? Alright. Uh, and they're hardly durable. So you can probably take them out with a single swing most of the time. Uh, or at least ground them. Alright. So one of them flies into you even though you hack its head off. Uh, and like the body slams into you, it weighs about as much as a normal person. What do you do? You got knocked down by it. What do you do? Uh, but you assume you weren't quick enough in this scenario, so uh, this is on top of you as well. Uh, it is currently on your stomach, but it's dead. So it's just a uh, corpse. Okay, uh, you could try to pry your katana under it and point the blade uh, upwards, then slicing through it. All right. Alright, as you're doing that, another one comes in for a swipe. What do you do? Uh, but you assume that one of them's coming for you before you can get up? Yep. One of them is. So you're gonna try to throw the legs uh, of the ghoul you killed onto the new one. Uh, to knock it to the ground, putting some distance between you before you stagger to your feet. Alright. You do that. Uh, now one of the other ghouls is coming towards you. Uh, you're gonna slash the one flying towards you while making a step to your right, letting uh, you put weight uh, into your slash and preventing them from landing atop you. Alright. Then you'll make your way to the second ghoul and try to dispatch it before another one comes. So as you're doing that, yet another ghoul comes swooping down. 
Uh, but you thought you killed the uh, third one with a slash, so as a as the fourth one, not the fifth uh, fifth one approaches, I uh, do the slam, glancing uh, slash, and dispatch the grounded ghoul. All right. Uh, you hear screaming above you. Uh, you look up and you see a ghoul uh, flying directly down towards you as fast as it can. Because it starts getting quite bloody and that's a very bad thing. Yeah. For that one, you'll just kind of sidestep to the uh, step to the side and let it hit the floor. Uh, yes, it crumples. Uh, its head explodes on the uh, impact. Maybe you roll based on how quickly it's approaching. Yeah, it's approaching very quickly. All right, so uh, that one's killed itself. Uh, and you notice one flying towards you from the ground. It's staying like about four feet off the ground, flying towards you. Probably gonna be a roll then, yeah. I doubt you could jump that, yeah. Uh, so you're gonna use your gun and try to hit on the basis of its uh, wings to ground it. All right. Uh, as you shoot at that one, one of them uh, is charging at you from behind and tries to headbutt you in the middle of your spine. So uh, as you're focusing on the one in front of you, there's one attacking you from behind. You're kind of sure which place is your favor here, yeah. So you're probably going to get low to the ground and try to point your sword towards them by putting the base to the floor, allowing it to absorb most of the force of the incoming ghoul, then you run for it, like to the nearest building. Alright, so you open the door, and there's a ghoul just lying there, like a regular one. Uh, stop on its head before it gets up, alright. The bones we can do the radiation, so you could do that. All right. So you do that. The ghouls are slamming against the wall like a bunch of moss to a uh, to a light. The flying ones. There you go. Uh, so now you need to clean your boots as well as your sword. Well, boot. Yeah. Uh, you don't want the blood to dull your boots. Uh, and let's see because of all the commotion yeah you notice there are some other ghouls coming from the room behind you anyway at this point you're gonna assume that uh, you can outrun ghouls on the ground so you don't need to worry about that much all right so the only way to run is outside where the remaining six or so ghouls are still flying around at the same uh, time, you cut through six ghouls, stomp one, I throw in half of a ghoul as well, while dancing around it, yeah. So you're getting tired? Yeah, probably. So you probably uh, used like eight to ten bullets to, on the low down ghoul, putting it at uh, 40 to 42 left, yeah. We'll find a part of the building that's too high up for the uh, non-wing ghouls to reach, but still indoors so that the wings ones can't get to you. All right. So I, uh, the building you're in is an apartment complex. I, uh, the best you could probably do would be finding a room that would be relatively clear of ghouls, and probably putting up a barricade. Got him. The best you could do is probably finding a relatively empty uh, apartment uh, to walk into and try to barricade yourself. Something important, what are you wearing? Uh, you are wearing a uh, plaid shirt and, uh, and some overalls. There you go. A plaid shirt and overalls. First of all, you're gonna judge yourself for uh, wearing overalls because you don't suit you at all. Yeah. But they got big pockets so you could hold your biscotti in them as you're running around. Now you're gonna cut off a patch of the overalls to wipe down the blade. 
All right. I uh, prefer to keep your biscotti in your hands. Fair enough. Uh, so clean off your blade. You got your biscotti. What do you do next? Uh, try to dislodge some bricks from somewhere or something. Throwable but end heavy. Uh, you dislodge some bricks and then open up a hidden room. The wall just crumbles as you dislodge one brick. Cool, you have a whole wall? Yeah. You got a whole wall. It's a lot less work than anticipated. Yeah. But you notice something behind the wall. Something glowing. Do you care to investigate? Uh, you're gonna find a window, lure the flying ghouls to you, and then throw a... Uh, throw fucking bricks at them? Alright. Uh, you think you'll avoid the, uh, the glowing thing? Well, uh, this glowing character comes walking out. Uh, he looks like a ghoul. Uh, but then he gives you a thumbs up and he says, It's all cool, dude. And you recognize him instantly. It's Glowing Gary. From Health Class. It's been years since you've seen each other. What do you do now? <laughs> Fucking Gary. He's giving you two thumbs up. Listen, if he went to school with you, he wasn't called fucking Gary. <laughs> Glowing Gary tries starting a conversation with you, seeing how things have gone over the past several years. Oh. Well, there it goes. I thought it crashed. Also, wait. He went to school with you? Yeah. Glowy Gary went to school with you. Uh, you're gonna take a big guy. Uh, uh, take off his head as uh, strong as a cleave as he can. Uh, it gets stuck in his neck and he's all like, Whoa, dude, what was that for? He puts on some sunglasses and then gives you two more thumbs up. Glowy Gary was always the durable one in school. Another swing and another. Alright. <laughs> Keep going till his head's cut off. I... He keeps giving the double thumbs up. He had very few friends at school. <laughs> he can't seem to get through his, uh, through his very strong middle neck area. And none of them were Gary. <laughs> well, Gary's all like, I know when I'm not wanted here. And then he just starts walking out. Giving two thumbs up as he walks away. You're not letting him get away? Uh, he walks out to where uh, the uh, flying ghouls are. Uh, and all the ghouls seem to surround him. Making a massive meat shield. All the other ghouls, even though they're feral, all make a double thumbs up sign. And they all start groaning, it's all cool, dude. <laughs> Sorry, that head's coming off. You throw bricks at them? Alright, so uh, they all start Voltroning into a giant uh, behemoth sized ghoul, uh, ghoul monster. Uh, with Gary as the head. What do you do? Gary is the head, now that's convenient. <laughs> exactly your target, alright. They're growing into a huge, uh, a huge monster. And, uh, the, uh, the flying ones, they're the floating ones, they all start to, uh, to gather up to form giant wings. There's also a bunch of ghouls flooding from other buildings that are uh, all forming into the Voltron as well. Meanwhile, Gary's all uh, still doing the two thumbs up signs at you, so I'm saying it's all cool, dude. Okay, well, you swing your uh, sword into Gary's neck so much that it's gonna get close to chipping, cracking, and bending. Uh, so you're just gonna. I. Uh, so you're just gonna go back indoors. Your sword is very, uh, damaged. 
Uh, you look outside after you get inside, and there's a giant Voltron of, uh, of uh, the ghouls, and they're all uh, starting to glow, as Gary did. Uh, and then they all just start marching around town, do giving the double thumbs up. What are you gonna do now? But yeah, you see Gary walking away. What are you doing? It didn't send? Oh. Well, what were you planning on doing since uh, glowing Gary is walking away? Those ghouls are neutralized, do you guess? Yeah. Something like that. Beep indeed. It's a glowing one. So are you gonna, uh, gonna watch Gary? Three minutes delay between, uh, sending a message on seeing on screen. Jesus Christ, KJT, what's going on? KJT, we're still waiting on your response. What are you doing now that Gary's walking away? Uh, you're not going to go near the Voltron ghoul pile. Not your concern. All right, well, a few minutes pass. You look up in the sky, and Gary's just flying around. He's absolutely massive, bigger than a Goliath. And uh, he's doing uh, his double thumbs up peace sign as he's flying around. You're gonna try to prevent uh, that that never happened? All right, what are you doing then? Are you gonna go find some raider group? All right. Are you finding raiders? Uh, they're all uh, blitzed out of their mind on jet, and they're all tweaking. All right, either you die and this mess is over, or you're the boss of the gang, you guess? Well, uh, you start uh, fighting off all the, uh, all the raiders. And uh, as you are fighting them, a giant mass falls from the sky on top of the raider's leader. It's Gary. He gives you a double thumbs up and jumps again, and off he, is, he goes. You can't see him anymore. He's left. Fucking Gary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as he's flying away, you hear him shout, It's all cool, dude. Uh, prepare to give him double middle fingers next time you see him and continue on your way. All right So the Raiders are All pretty spaced out. They're all very blitzed Nobody's standing guard Gary ruined everything <laughs> Yeah With his two thumbs up and his sunglasses on his face Glowing Gary. Fine, you'll try to find a settlement of people. All right. So you find a settlement of people. Uh, they're all doing settler things. They question why you're there. What brings you to their little town? And when you're there, you're gonna fall to your knees and cry. All right. As for fucking usual. All right. So they, uh, uh, one of the uh, older. The older civ uh, civilians just walks up to you, places a hand on your shoulder, uh, and then gives you a pendant and then says, uh, "You'll find the way through the uh, through our Lord and Savior, uh, and then all would be saved." What do you do? Sorry, is this person trying to push religion on you? Yes. Do you wish to examine the amulet or? Okay, do you analyze what sort of weapons they have? Uh, everybody has a, a, a fat man. They all have fat men and they are loaded to the teeth with mini nukes. How many are there? Uh, there are probably a couple hundred in this settlement. It's a very successful settlement. Uh, you already know that the pen is going to be fucking Gary, so you won't look at it. All right. Uh, one of them tries to show you to their church Which it's a uh, a huge building it doesn't look pre-war it looks like it was built by them. What the fuck did I just do? All right So they try guiding you to their church uh, I Ask them if you could see their mini nukes because you've never seen them before I 
They start screeching like apes and uh, and pumping their mini nukes in the air. Alright, what do you do? The settlement has gone bananas. Okay, while they're screeching, you're gonna fucking sprint away. <laughs> Alright. So you run away from the settlement. Uh, with their huge, uh, huge building. And their religion. Because their mini nukes are gonna land and detonate, uh, the ones they're carrying. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be around for that? Alright. Whoa. Look at this, KJT. I found it, the sacred fabled hole. Well, they're all dead, so you're gonna take one look at the pendant and throw it away. All right, you see it, and it looks like a T-posing Gary with little uh, sunglasses painted over the eyes. And at the end of his hands on each T-pose is the thumbs up. Fucking knew it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you throw away the pendant of Gary. I just got garried. Yeah. All right, so you throw away the pendant of Gary. Find another settlement. All right. Uh, everybody there looks like a mafioso. Uh, you're gonna ask up to one of them and uh, walk up to one of them and ask where where you are. One of them says New 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 York. Got him. So what do you do in New 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 York? Yes, that's the name of it. USA? Yes. The funny thing is that you're not even in New York, you're in Tennessee. So for some reason, New 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 York is uh, not in New York. But it's in the USA, yes. Yes it is. Uh, you're going to hang yourself. Uh, as you kick the chair out from other you, under you, uh, you feel hands go beneath your feet. They're holding you up before you could hang yourself. You <laughs> swing the sword at the head of Gary. Uh, you look behind you, and uh, the uh, person that's there is a glowing one indeed, but he has a pompadour. He says, wait, wait, no, it's not Gary. It's Barry, his twin brother. All right, so now uh, that Barry is there, uh, glowing Barry, uh, what do you do? Did he go to school with you? No, he went to the next school over. Uh, he also gestures and then says, hey, I'm walking here. I uh, tell him that Gary's gone wild and needs to be stopped, so you should quickly go get him. Barry uh, then says, I'm walking here, and then he runs away. Uh, his head also opens up like he's the predator. And his pompadour wig grows really huge. Whoa ho ho! He moved his hands, he fallen in yourself. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, as your spirit flies away, you go up to the gates of heaven. There's an angel sitting there and he's all like, oh, it's you, KJT. We've been expecting you. And he opens up the gates for you. You don't know the spirit? Well, you do now. Alright, so, what do you do now? That, uh, you're, uh, that you, you're in heaven at the uh, pearly gates. What are you gonna do? Well, you don't, you're not alcoholic. <laughs> All right. All right, so you're at the pearly gates. Do you go in? No? All right. Uh, your only other choice is to go to hell. What are you wearing? Uh, you are now no longer wearing your ov uh, overalls and plaid. 
Uh, you are now wearing I uh, leather. A full leather gimp suit, that's what you're wearing. You do not wear that. <laughs> Alright, you say that and then suddenly it turns into uh, regardless, of con uh, regardless of consequence, you rip it off. Alright, as you're ripping it off, it transforms into a, uh, a uh, cat onesie. There you go. You're now in a cat onesie. Comfortable bedwear. It just so happens to look like a cat. Now what do you do? Yep, a cat onesie. Bucket chair. You'll wear that. Does a cat onesie have a tail? Yes, it does. And unlike a regular cat onesie, you could move the tail. What color is it? Uh, it's blue. The whole thing? Yes. Pull the tail up. I, I see you're holding something and cry again. Alright. So you're crying at the pearly gates. Uh, and the guy that's uh, sitting there, the angel that's sitting there, just sort of sighs and then I places his hand on your head and says, It's okay, my child. And what do you do? I don't know about you, but I love this place. Uh, probably say, saw me and say, It's not fair. If I do, you go to heaven, Gary will be there. But if I go to hell, it will just be all be Gary. And break down its tears. Do not talk to you to, you know, crying. Alright. Uh, he says the only way to progress is to move up or down. It's up to you. You have an idea? What do you do? Can't grapple a gate and refuse to let go? Alright. So as you do that, you notice a bunch of other people ascending. Uh, they all appear to be the settlers in the town uh, that you were in before. Uh, the religious ones, all of them come up. They all died. Now they're waiting at the gates, waiting in line, patiently. So you're holding up the line. So since you're holding up the line, what do you do? Oh, I become addicted to alcohol. Alright. Yeah, you want to go to some form of purgatory where you have no senses. Uh, if you do that, you won't let go of the gate. Alright. So as you are, uh, as you are clenching the gate and saying that, uh, you start hearing a massive amount of rumbling in the distance. You look towards the rumbling and see uh, rising above the clouds a giant T-posing Gary. And the rumbling gets louder as he rises up farther. Uh, his eyes start glowing red as the rest of him glows a brighter green. Nice. I did it. Do you have your sword with you? Uh, no. You are only you with a cat onesie. Eat some gumdrops, some iguana bits, some iguana soup. And some right away. You're gonna stay as you are. I and request your non-sensory purgatory again. I then I Gary's voice booms over the distance. It's all cool, dude, he says. And I uh, then I okay. Then the light glows even harder, and you hear a chorus in the background. All of the uh, all of the cultists of Gary drop to their knees in a bow, and then Gary says, "There is no uh, no purgatory, only here." Oh boy, it's a terrible weapon. Let's say, Gary, you know something, something really important. You, Gary, are a tosser. I his I. Uh, Two thumbs rise even higher and grow. And he says, it's all cool, dude. Yet again. The chorus gets louder in your ears. Anything else you're gonna do? Are you still clenching to the gate? And furthermore, Gary, you are not cool. Uh, suddenly the chorus sounds deep fried as hell and is bass boosted. Very, very loud. Uh, your ears start bleeding. 
Uh, Gary's eyes open even further, and they glow so bright that your eyes burn out of their sockets. You have now attained your purgatory, however, you still are living in the same world that Gary exists. But you can no longer see or hear, but you can taste. And all you taste is the blood, the blood of yourself. What do you do, KJT? We will keep tasting your blood. Are you still clenching the gate, KJT? Nice taste. Yeah, you're still uh, holding on the gate? All right. You start feeling hands trying to pry you off uh, from what you can only assume to be all the cultists that were waiting in line behind you. So there are loads of hands all over you now? Yeah, and they're pulling you off the gate. Oh, you think you're just going to start screaming, honestly? All right. Are you gonna let go of the gate, or are you still holding the gate? Still holding on, probably? Alright. So you start to see in your eye, in the void of your eyes, off in the distance, a glowing light, as you still feel the hands uh, grabbing onto you. Uh, as the light seems to grow bigger and bigger, you make out a silhouette. It's the T-posing, glowing Gary. He's got his image burned into your eyes. <laughs> Are you still holding on to the gate? Uh, time for your final trump card, your real last resort. Uh, you gotta try to apply as much mental stress to yourself so that you pass out. All right. You pass out and you're no longer clinging to the gate. As you fade out, the, the, uh, the glowing image of glowing Gary fades away and you feel feet stepping over you through the gate. And I, uh, you are now, uh, now passed out. All right. What do you do now that you're passed out, KJT? People are walking over you. You're broken and unconscious. Yes. Uh, you think you'll just stay unconscious? Okay. Thanks. Bye. All right. You see, uh, you start hearing something as you're unconscious. Uh, you recognize it. It's the voice of Barry. Barry himself is also. Uh, Voltron into a giant glowing one. Now him and I, uh, you open your eyes, you're able to see again. You see him and uh, Gary fighting, like two kaiju in the clouds. No, you don't, you're deaf. Uh, Barry has cured you of all ailments. And you have no eyes, he gave you new eyes. Eyes that could see thousands of miles. So you'll cry. All right. So you're crying as I, in the distance, Barry is saying, hey, I'm walking here and pushing Gary. And Gary then does his double thumbs up move, move and says he's, uh, it's all cool, dude. And then that sends a shockwave towards Barry. As this happens, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of the, uh, the followers are walking up to the, uh, to the fight and joining in. You cry as you sit there watching them. Do you wish to support them in any way? Are you gonna take a side in this ultimate epic battle of Barry and Gary? Again? No, you wish to cry? All right. Well, you are crying. And since you are crying, you are now at peace. The end. You have no need for these weird glowing ones. Well, as I said, you are at peace. The end. <laughs> Alright. So what did you think of your personalized adventure? You're definitely not at peace. Anything you would like to add to the story, KJT? Uh, you were meant to be at peace and brain dead after the rope was around your neck? Well, it didn't end there for you. You came into contact with the cultists. You were meant to see, uh, be seeing what would happen if ghouls were real and could fly? <laughs> Yeah, this is what happens when ghouls turn real. You're scared <laughs> and frightened. Fair enough. Probably gonna cry. And nobody who went to your school called Gary. Well, there was in this universe.